Are you ready? We're ready. Okay. Well, say go. Um, welcome to Women's Dance. I'm Sarah Rourke. And Victoria. And we're here today to visit. And um, I don't know, we've been talking about trying to figure out different topics that we can talk about on the show. Mm-hmm. And just kind of catching up because it's been a long time. And our last show was the first time in a year. So <laughs> it's good that we're together. Um, and we're missing Allie today. We hope she feels better. Yes, feel bad, better, Allie. Me miss you. No, well, anyways, how you doing? Good. Just like <laughs> it's just so hot today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just having a little bit of car trouble, like with our AC. So I'm driving and I'm just sweating. But it's gonna hopefully get fixed Thursday. So. Oh, I hope so. It's yeah. a rough time to not have AC. <laughs> I know. We have AC, but it's like partial AC. So it's still hot in the vehicle. That's no fun at all. No. Especially in 90 degree heat today. Mm -hmm. I just got out of the pool. My mother has a really great pool. So we've been going like every single day that we can. Mm -hmm. Right after she gets out of summer program, we like hop over there. Like, yeah, swim time. It's good stuff. Summer's so good for that. I'm trying to make more time to be like present and outside. And because if I don't watch myself, I tend to just stay in my house. And just, like, be in the AC and, like, mm-hmm. death, doom scrolling, you know? Like, <laughs> for real, like, that's the that's what happens. And I feel like that's a reality for a lot of us is, like, you don't yeah. get motivated. Mm-hmm. You're just hanging out. Yeah, we call that being a mushroom. Because <laughs> oh. <I feel laughs> you're just in the dark. You're just either laying down or on your phone and just literally growing like a mushroom in the dark <laughs> you veg you lie like broccoli yep <laughs> i definitely mushroom-esque <laughs> even though i don't like mushrooms to eat i definitely identify with the mushroom family right now and not in the psychedelic sense <laughs> oh my God. i love mushrooms like regular mushrooms to eat like oh, with yeah? food <laughs> mm. no i love them no thank you give me all the mushrooms i will if we go out to eat together i'll just throw them all on your plate mm-hmm. you good. please please do it so what's happened in your in your world um same old same old stuff just working kids i got a dog so i have to walk her every night which is good um that way like i get out i'm walking her and she's strong and she's not big but she's a pit bull so mm. like she she's pulling me <laughs> so like my right arm is getting stronger just because i have to hold her I can feel my legs like working and so I had this realization that I'm in my mid 30s we are the generation like our kids and are gonna eventually be looking up to someday like when we we become duh-duhs or maybe hit retirement or whatever stage but that's like us and that kind of hit me really heavy Hmm. but in a good positive way Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Now, I remember thinking people who were my age when I was little were so old. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like, I'm sorry, guys. You weren't old at all. And I thought you were like Duda's at like 35, 30. Mm-hmm. Like I thought that was very old. And I mean, time is relative. And I just feel like I, I don't know, maybe it's because um, like my body wants to give out on me sometimes like my foot's kind of busted right now and I'm kind of like okay well you really gotta like get your health in check and get your insurance in check and all those adulting things that nobody wants to talk about Mm -hmm. but you really got to get done it's um it's a good reality to know that I'm on the right path for my daughter but it's also like a scary reality to see my parents getting older and I've seen other people's parents, like you don't see them for a long time. And then you're like, oh, wow, mm-hmm. like we're all aging at the same time. So it's like when you don't see somebody and you see them again, you're like, oh, OK, now you're the Duda, you're the elder. And I remember when you were my age, when I was a kid. So mm-hmm. it's, it's just a really interesting thing to like a per- different perspective, right? Like, am I doing what's right so that my daughter is seeing someone good as she grows up? And I would hope so. And I've had people say like at like, uh, well, I went to the greenery yesterday, and the woman, she was like, you're doing a really good job with her. And I was like, 
Oh, thank you. Like, <laughs> oh, like I, I mean, it's nice to see that people see it who are just complete strangers. It's mm-hmm. not somebody who's like your hype girl or like somebody who's always like, yeah, you're good. Like, don't worry about it. Like, are you enabling me or am I really good? You know, like, <laughs> I'm not sure. But, but yeah, no, I feel that like in, in a good way as well. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure there's moments where it's not so much, but. And that's going to be for everybody, but it's just, it kind of like hits home that our generation is going to be who all our kids, our daughters are going to be looking up to someday. And it's like, what type of legacy are we going to have? And are they going to be proud of? Or what are they going to look up to? Like, are we going to, what type of foundation are we going to have for that generation coming behind us you know yeah so it's i'm kind of in like this it's not an existential crisis but just like (laughs) (laughs) just like holy crap it's that's gonna be us someday yeah we hope yeah for Mm -hmm. sure like no i um i had a lovely friend of mine send me a reel about like the reality of life and my dad was also sending me that he's he's reading this book about like the reality of us and like growing up in the generations and like how many people know who their great great grandparents were or Mm -hmm. their great 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 grandparents like did they really leave a legacy other than a name and a family tree like what do we know about them and how much of that is really sustainable and i think Mm. in the present day for sure, it's it's sustainable for our intermediate family and even maybe like one or two generations, for sure. Like we know we have pictures, we have mem- memorabilia, we have stuff to honor those family members. But after that, in our families, we're asking to like honor the next seven generations. But I could not tell you seven generations before you, before me, mm-hmm. who that grandmother and grandfather, who those dudas are. And I wish that I did. Because then maybe it would give me peace of mind that seven generations later, my great, 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 great grandkids are going to know that there was Dr. Sarah Rourke in the family, Mm -hmm. but they may not know. So I'm like, how long does my legacy have to last? And how hard do I need to push myself to ensure that it's good for anybody other, not that I don't want to think longitudinally, but like other than my nieces and my nephews and my daughter and her children and their children, like in the in now so maybe it's an existential crisis <laughs> <laughs> because really I'm, I'm thinking of like here but then also like okay we're all like trying to yes I want to sustain the earth for the next seven generations mm-hmm. but my memory is like this part of it you know and mm-hmm. I hope maybe I tweet something to make a little bit of change for them way down the line and I think I might have went way over here in a tangent on you and I'm sorry no 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 <laughs> but, that's but, fine but um when I got sent that reel thank you um it was kind <laughs> of like it was really like an awakening because my dad's like well we're not gonna fucking be here like who, mm-hmm. what does it matter I'm like it matters to me right here right now mm-hmm. and for your girls to know that they have a strong mom and a strong dad and they can learn from you and feel safe to ask you questions and and feel safe to like really grow in a good way and I think I think there are people who I mean are mushrooms and they sit in the dark and they don't care and then there are others that kind of like me I just step out and then I come back in Mm -hmm. and and try and make that difference like I've had a lot of anxiety lately and I was talking to some of my um my cousins and friends that we've gone through the pandemic and I mean, we're not even done the pandemic. I think I have like three people I know that have COVID right now, Mm -hmm. but, um, but I was talking about how, when I go into bigger spaces, like grad parties or art market, like the art market and the art festival and like those types of small business fair, like I do, I went to that, like it took me like a long time to mentally prepare myself to go out of the house to mm. see all of those people and I was like am I crazy like why like I I can do it for work because it's like mandated like oh come speak on a panel I'm like okay it's in my schedule it's done go check but if it's not something like that where I it's mandatory I'm kind of like um I don't know if I want to go I don't know if I can exist I don't want to go by myself 
I don't want people looking at me. Like I have all of these different things in my head. And as I talked to other people, like one of my cousins, they were like, I feel the same way what is that? And I'm like, I don't know. Is it something that happened when we had COVID or is it something like, I don't know. Have you, have you, have you gone through that? Or do you know anybody who's going through that? I go through that with the girls. Like I don't like bringing them to certain places, certain towns. I don't like taking them to large places where, um, especially not in the community, just because I'm worried they're going to be taken They're Somebody's going to hurt them or, like they're going to get snatched and get into human trafficking because mm. people can tell we're indigenous. Like that's in the back of my mind. So I have that restriction. Um, but in the community, no, not so much. Um, but I think I know what you mean just because like in our community, you're all, we always run into people we know. Mm-hmm. And it's like every few steps, it's like, Hey, how's it going? How's the life? And that can be tiring. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And then I have, like, friend guilt. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, I care about all my friends. Like, I really do. I care about each and every one individually for for different reasons. And they wouldn't be my friends if they weren't. But when it comes down to at the end of the day, like, every day is kind of the same. Mm -hmm. But how much energy do you have to give out to others that aren't in your immediate circle? And sometimes I'm like, well, shit, I haven't called that person in X amount of time. And the good friends, they just pick up where you left off. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, like I, I don't, I feel like a shitty friend and I'm trying not to like think about it. But at the same time, I'm hoping most of the time they think the same thing. They're like, well, I didn't call you either. So am I the shitty friend? So there's this like overthinking of like what energy that I'm putting out and if there's a balance in it or if I'm leaving anybody out and they feel that way. And if I did, I'm sorry. Cause I like, I really think about it really hard. Like Mm. I didn't give quality time to certain people and, and I hope they don't think that's them feeling slighted or like I, I'm not okay with them because I don't have an, I don't have any issues with anybody, you know, but it's in my head that, well, maybe they're mad. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, it almost sounds too like you're just protecting your own energy because mm-hmm. it takes a lot of energy to be around other people and to give your energy to another person in whatever sort of way. Right. So it sounds like that's all you're doing is just keeping your energy, your energy and sustaining that for you. And there was a thing that I had never heard about until I went to grad school. I probably mentioned it before about being an introverted extrovert. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, that's so real for me. It's like it, as soon as I come home from like a big event, I'm just drained and it takes a long time for me to recover. But when you were talking about like bringing your kids out in like a public space, like a Target or like Mm -hmm. a a shopping mall, like, I mean, they're kind of ceased to exist, but some of them are there. Um, Did you hear about that woman who had her, her trigger warning, um, had her kid shot they got shot in a parking what? lot and she was, they said, well, she left, if she hadn't had left her kid in the cart and she had put her kid in the, well, she put her kid in the car and then she went close by to like put her cart on the thing. Mm-hmm. And the person, this crazy lady who had stopped at the cops first, and then she walked across the parking lot, went to like an antique store and got a gun or no, they got a knife. She got some kind of vintage knife that she stole from there. And she walked into the parking lot and attacked this woman and her kid, like a four-year-old or something. And I think, I'm pretty sure she killed the kid and like severely wounded the woman. And so there's this whole like mom uproar Mm -hmm. on social media about like keeping your kids safe and what do you do? And I was talking about with a couple other moms. I'm like, well, what do you do? And I was like, you know, I start my car and I put my daughter in it. And I park near like a cart place Mm -hmm. and then I'll put her in my car and automatically start it and lock it. And Mm -hmm. then I'll go put my cart away. So I know she's like contained and safe. But if you have a psychopath, like you never know what's going to happen. But it, it, I was trying not to overthink it and like let it terrify the shit out of me. Cause I go a lot of places with just my sidekick, right? It's Mm -hmm. just me and Dayuela Dennis. Like we go all over, like we have the best time. So I was just like, don't overthink it. Don't think that there's a psychopath in every corner, <laughs> every parking lot, you know? But it's like, how many of those things, like, you think of all the horrible things in the world, like, how many are you going to keep 
in your head when you move forward and how many are you going to like learn from and keep going? <laughs> yeah. You know, like it, it, it was a lot that week <laughs> for me oh and God. shopping carts. Yeah. That's <laughs> like up. really, really messed up that that happened. And to that poor woman and the daughter, like, was that local or just I don't, something I don't on think the so. news? No. Oh and, my I, God. and I follow those stupid scanner things on Facebook. Do you, are you up? My, my cousin had me add them and I was like, well, shit, now I know who got stabbed in Raymondville or up by Lake Placid this morning. And I'm like, 50 year old male. I'm like, what the heck? You know, like, why do I need to know this? I don't need to know this. But it reminds me of when my daughter had a scanner when oh, we yeah. were growing up. Mm-hmm. They're like, ah, tell us what's going on. Who, who was in the, who was in the high speed chase or who went to the hospital? Why is the ambulance going by? And be like, call Duda. Duda will know. And she's probably sitting by her phone, like dialing up everybody, <laughs> you know, like she'd always have her chair and do it up. So I don't know. I might be rambling a little. <laughs> no, no, no. That's fun. <laughs> but it's, it's also scary that because like that story about the woman and the daughter that, that happened to happen to. Yeah. Happened to happen to. Yeah, it happened to happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's real um it's real but it's also like you said it's another um fear but i feel like as women with small children we always have a fear because i'm always like looking behind me even if it's we're out as a family and will is with us and he has a few kids i have a few kids i'm constantly like scanning around us because half of the time he's not. <laughs> no, it's real. I'm sorry, Will, but it's true. And so I'm <laughs> I'm the one like looking behind us, watching people in front, watching what the girls are doing. And he does, but I feel like women are just more in tune with stuff like that and to feel what sort of vibe there is, what sort of energy, if that person looks like a creep. Oh, yeah. No, I think there's a, there's a big thing to say about women's intuition or mother's intuition. Like, mm-hmm. not to say fathers don't have it because I'm sure they do. But, like, I can process multiple things at once. And I'm also planning a list of things that I need to buy, things I need to pay, things I need to get done, all in my head at the same time. Mm-hmm. But then I'll trip over my own feet. So, <laughs> you <laughs> yes. know, like, like, it's, yep. like we're, I'm very methodical about how I process things. So, yeah, I definitely survey a scene. I'm like, okay, watch out for that cord over there. She's going to trip over. I got to give like a PSA to the fam. Like, watch out. You know, like, mm-hmm. like you're very, like, I can't imagine how it is with like as many children as you have. And I have one and I feel like I'm always kind of like, but also trying to be in the moment and, and, um, have a good time with her at the same mm-hmm. time which is kind of um i mean it's a lot of it could be a lot of pressure if you let it you know like but then it's kind of just natural right it's just for sure to it just is. jump in definitely yeah i think it's um i think it's fun to take her and show her things like a whole like new things a new world like because she's never seen things before and like i've been taking her to a lot of my doctor's appointments Mm -hmm. and i had to get blood work yesterday and i had her come with me and i was like this is dayuela denyas dr denyas she wants to be a baby doctor and she's really interested in what you're doing here so when she was like listening to my heart and like taking my blood pressure she was like all up in there like (laughs) learning about all the things and then i had to get blood and she sat right next to me in that big chair and she's like i'll hold your hand mama you don't have to be scared and then she's like then she's telling everybody yeah they put a big needle in her arm like she was she has a story and she's a little storyteller if she comes up to you she's like well guess what i have a cat named sage and he's a butthead and (laughs) i lost a tooth and then like she goes on and on she has like big stories all the time everywhere we go and i just love seeing the world through her eyes Mm -hmm. and how how amazing things are for her like it's so fun like the best thing your kids tell stories um not so much but we like to do um we do a scary scary story night like i (laughs) i like to just make up whatever crazy story off the top of my head to the girls like they have their favorite one it's 
a dragon. They call it the dragon story. <laughs> like, it's real quick. I'll do a quick little brief of it. In the story, we're, like, out walking as a family. And then Bubba is the hero because then a dragon comes. And, and like, he chases us back to our house. And all the girls, they get into their bed. And I'm, like, making sure they're safe in their room. And then the dragon comes crashing into the house. And then Bubba, he gets like this big, huge axe and chops it its head off. <laughs> <laughs> and then he boils it up and we eat like dragon soup and then we get powers. Like that's the crazy story I just made up <laughs> wow. I like off that. the top of my head. It's so good. But so we do scary story night and like they always want me to tell them a true story, but I don't really know. Just like our community, the hoof lady or like shapeshifters and stuff. Um, so I tell them that, but then their little ima- imaginations start going and then they create their own little scary story. That's so that's awesome. fun. That's it's like, super that's, creative. It is. Like that's a like little that. fun family night we do. Like turn the TV off, make it dark. That's super cute. Mm-hmm. I love that. My daughter walked in the other in the room the other day and she says, Mama, did I tell you the story about the lady with the green ribbon around her neck? And I was like, I know this story. It's from like the scary stories you tell in the dark with the creepy, the black and white with the creepy, the creepiest artwork you've ever seen in your life. Like I was telling her, I was like, you know, I used to hide in the closet with a flashlight with like all my friends and my sister. Like we do scary stories and we'd read those Mm -hmm. to each other and like scream our heads off. It was like the best (laughs) time of my life. And I was just like, how did you hear that story? She's like, my friend told it to me at school. And I was like, well, those kinds of stories never die, right? She's like, and then her head falls off. Oh my God, mama. And I was like, yeah, you're my kid. You're freaking creepy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That was like my favorite one growing up because Mm -hmm. was it green or was it black? I think in some stories it was black, other stories it was green, some were yeah. red. Yeah, the girl with the ribbon around her throat yeah. when she was little, and then she grew up and married the guy, and then, yeah, and she's like, and then she was dying, and the doctor says she could take the ribbon off, and she does, and her head falls <gasps> off. Oh my God, yes. And yeah, her yep. face was like, her head, mom, and I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I love it so much, because I remember my response to that, and I'm like... Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Freaking scary stories to tell in the dark. Yeah. Oh, Just still being creepy. in, like, third grade reading those scary stories. Mm-hmm. But it worked for having good imagination now as an adult. <laughs> and, re- like, retelling with my own kids. No, oh, that's awesome. You should do some more, like, ad hoc <laughs> storytelling <laughs> instead of... Like, we read a lot of books at night, and we do a lot of that, but we should just, like... She tells stories anyway, mm-hmm. so why not? I'm like, that's that's such a beautiful way to, like, build relationship and creativity. I like that mm-hmm. a lot. Uh, and it will help me tap back into my writing and whatever, yeah. you know? Like, I think that's really great. I, um, I don't know. I've been thinking a lot about Halloween. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right around the corner. <laughs> it. I mean, it doesn't feel like it is, but then it does at the same time. And I started working on my witch's ball costume. Mm-hmm. And my, I, um, I had my mother volunteer, <laughs> voluntold to help me with my outfit. Like I bought patterns and stuff so we can make something this year. And, um, when we were growing up, she made all the coolest costumes cause we didn't have a lot of money. So we did like, she made like a gizmo. Oh wow. Um, she did rainbow bright. We did care bear. We did popples. I was telling um, Brian King the other day, I was like, yeah, I had that Care Bear costume and I I fell right down the fucking stairs (laughs) and I stood right back up. Like I was invincible and that costume was like all padding. The head was like this big and then our little face was in the mouth of the bear, which Uh is kind of wonky, but awesome. (laughs) But she always made like princess gowns and witches, like whatever we asked for, she would get the stuff. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't realize is she'd go to like a secondhand store and buy like old dresses and then repurpose them and when I asked her for this costume which I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's a secret um I she got this ball gown like that nobody would ever wear again and she like started cutting it up and she's like you like this fabric and I was like oh you're crafty (laughs) 
<laughs> so she's super excited to help me and and uh, I think it's going to be really good this year. And Yaya, who's won uh, uh, mm-hmm. she every year so far, she's going to be one of the judges this year, I heard. <gasps> yeah. I'm so is she not going to be dressing up Oh, at I'm all? sure she's going to have the best costume there, but she I don't think she's going to compete. She's so creative. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Like She kills every year. Every year. Yeah. But I'm glad we still do it and that they're going to keep it going because it's one of the things that – most people in the community like they really look forward to it now and and i'm excited i love seeing how creative people are like last year hopping around um as a witch was super fun <laughs> and it just to like step out of the regular and not have to be in a bar to do it which was really nice to me for me anyways yeah and like you brought your daughter to that right no i didn't i know i think i'm gonna bring her this year though yeah, last year I didn't bring her. She was actually sleeping by the time I left the house. Okay. Because yeah. I do know, like, some people, that they bring their young daughters to be witches as well. Yeah, I think this year I might bring her because she'll be almost six by then. So Ooh. she'll be able to hang and I can get her a costume. I think she'll love that. Mm-hmm. Definitely. No, I love all the community events and activities. Like, There's a color run. Is that like tomorrow? Like a it bubble? It is tomorrow. Yep. A bubble run? Are you doing that? Yeah, we probably will. Um, a color bubble run. That's awesome. It, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. We've gone to, oh God, I think we've been going since the girls have been little. So for like six years, six, seven years. Oh, wow. We try to hit up everyone. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think I've ever gone. I went to a color run in, down in Albany one time. I did a 5K 500 years ago when I used to run. And it was super fun, but they just used, like, the powder. Mm-hmm. And now I'm glad they used the bubbles. I think that's probably a little bit cleaner. Or maybe it isn't. Who knows? Um, Yeah, like, <laughs> last year it was each community organization, like, they were set up. And they were the ones throwing it or, like, squirting you with the, a bottle or something. But then the fire department was there with the big hose so you could kind of like run through it because oh, it was hot. Fun. And then I think people did bubbles as well. But anyway, it's it's so much fun because it's like everybody is just drenched in sweat because it's always hot. And then they get, they're wet and they just all, everybody looks silly, but nobody cares because we all look the same. <laughs> like it's so much fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, we have some really good community events. I'm looking forward to pumpkins, as usual, apple picking, all the apple things, pumpkin and apple, whatever. <laughs> all the witchy stuff, all the creepy stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm, I I mean, I do that kind of all year, <clears throat> but I've, I've been surprised that there's a lot of like pink and white themed Halloween stuff this year. Have really? you seen that? Yeah, you'll no. have to look into it. I think their theme at Michael's this year is white halloween and that's interesting yeah and so there's like lots of skulls lots of anatomical hearts there was a thing like a big sign that said curiosities and oddities and it was like in white and gray it was very cool yeah i'm i'm glad they're taking a creative route with that but i also saw a lot of pink halloween which my sister is really into because she's a barbie (laughs) (laughs) and i was like okay that's i love that for you (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) but yeah i want to um one of my friends goes to universal every year and does that hot the haunted (gasps) mansion oh wow because it's like her aunt her wedding anniversary Mm -hmm. too so she goes down with her husband and they do it every year that's like a bucket list item i want to go to Disney World, Universal, for Halloween, because they go all out. Like, it's such a production just for Halloween. Someday I'll make it there. I want to go with you. Mm -hmm. I also want to go to Salem again. But, like, not during Halloween, maybe, like, before or after. Mm -hmm. Because I heard it's, like, crazy packed during Halloween time. I'm sure it is. So, any other existential crises that we need to... Hash out. <laughs> it was just like the legacy part. Because it it's inevitable. Everybody's aging. And it really got me thinking because we have so many great women in our community that are doctors, who are educators, who are founders of bringing education to community and starting 
the different programs. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I wonder if I'm ever going to have like something named after me, <laughs> you know, or like have a scholarship named after me. Mm-hmm. But then I also have like an imposter syndrome and I not belittle, but I think who I am and what I do is not like a, a big impact. <laughs> but you know it what does. I mean? Yeah, but it does. You know, like I feel like we all kind of feel that way in a certain type of way because we're looking at somebody else's grass being greener. Mm-hmm. And just because you don't have a park bench with your name on it doesn't mean that you're not helping people get their homes. And like how many families in our community can say that, that you help them to be safe and to be comfortable in their space. Like that's a big deal. Like on the broad scheme, the grand scheme of things, like to be able to provide that to somebody and give them access to it and make that easier for them Hmm. like that's kind of a superpower like because how many people don't have homes and how many people have 50 people and not 50 but you know what I mean that's hyperbole but like how many people do they have in their homes at the same time like intergenerationally and they're like on top of each other and Mm -hmm. how uncomfortable that may be and that's such a that's such a gift that you give people I mean, they have to do the work too, but, but it's reciprocal and, and I don't know, I see you well, and I'm not, you. I'm not just trying to be your hype girl, <laughs> but I can, you know, like I, I think it's, it's so important. Well, and not a lot of people know too, like that there are homeless people here in community and it's not like what we would see in the, the cities of people on the streets, uh, living on tents, in tents, I mean. It's couch surfing. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of that around here. Oh, yeah. Of course, it's hidden behind walls. So not everybody's going to see or know or living in cars. That is like a huge problem. No, I've seen it and I've heard about it. And it's like, what can you do? I mean, we definitely have a housing shortage. I know they just posted about the housing. Like they're going to, what, five or six Mm -hmm. houses? Like that's very exciting for those five or six families and their extended families. It's so exciting. Mm-hmm. And I'm just wondering like if we're ever going to build like a larger apartment complex or something where it can be like controlled in a way where it's not going to turn into like a project. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like a healthy living kind of place. Like I, I can't, I can't, I don't know how to even think about wrapping my head around doing something like that, but I know it's definitely a need like people oh, definitely. with safe homes, you know, mm-hmm. where it doesn't, I mean, but that's up to the people, how it turns into, what it turns into, you know? So, yeah. yeah. But if you want a park bench with your name on it, I will go and buy you one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then right next to me will be Dr. Sarah Roy. <laughs> Come sit on our bench. Yes. <laughs> we'll put Allie on there too. <laughs> uh-huh. Pleasure doula Allie. Yes. Absolutely. No, I saw on her, um, you're talking about all the women in community and all the amazing things they're doing. She had posted, did you see her post the other day about like she didn't have makeup on and it was mm-hmm. just like a, a like a, just a, a very honest photo of herself and then all of the women that posted on her post with mm-hmm. all these beautiful pictures and then someone was like, we have so many beautiful women in our community and that are just, they don't hide behind filters and they're not like... Like, if you see me in public, I, I hope I look like I do on social media because mm-hmm. I don't want to misconstrue myself, <laughs> if that's the way you would say that. But I think there's, there's um, technology really allows us to hide ourselves out in community on social media, you know, because mm-hmm. it's, it's so easy to do that with AI and everything. Yeah, AI, you got Snapchat, you got 10 million filters to make you look like kim kardashian or i don't know some famous person and your lips and like perfect skin i mean it it makes you like feel good for a few seconds and then (laughs) well at least that's how it makes me feel yeah i like sending those to like my family and being like look how silly i look but then i don't i would never post anything like that i think it's unless it's obvious that it's not me (laughs) yeah are you okay with your sound I, it just cut out for like a few seconds, but it's good. It's back. Yeah, so I was proud of all the women who posted, and I mm-hmm. thought it was super uplifting that she did that. So I was super happy about it. No, it was great. There was like, what, 
40 or 50 people that were just like, boom, here I am. Yeah. <laughs> some people with some crazy hair uh-huh. and they just look so awesome. I was just like, look at you first thing in the morning. Like, I don't give two fucks. Like, this is me. You know, like, like, I don't know if I'm that confident. Like I, I did kind of flatten my hair a little mm. bit because I had just woken up and I was like, okay, I don't look too <laughs> crazy now. Now I can take a picture. But I tried, I tried to be as honest as possible about it. But yeah, I I don't like the hiding. I want to see real people. That's why I call people on the phone. Do you call people on the phone? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> and like my the one that we call the most is um like my sister and we do FaceTime. Mm. But generally yeah, I don't talk or text a lot of people honestly. <laughs> so the ones that I do, it's family like my parents my sister my cousins so it's just like a quick text Mm. but generally i don't i don't talk to people other than family (laughs) i'm so like you're talking to all of aquazesni right now so that's a lie (laughs) that is a good point but generally like i'm in my day-to-day life i i'm just in my bubble i work in my bubble like that's it (laughs) and then here's my other bubble yeah. The space. Well, this is a good bubble to be in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm happy I have a good summer tan. I'm happy to be in my own bubble as well and hope that I'm not holding on to guilt of not talking to people when I'm in the bubble, you know? like And, and I definitely, <clears throat> I, I like to talk to people on the phone, especially my friends that live really far away. Oh, yeah. Um, Because I have a lot of friends that have moved, like, to Amsterdam and to Denver. And, like, all my friends that I was really, really close to, they all kind of, they're all over the place now. So Mm -hmm. it's really nice that we have um, technology or else I don't think I'd ever talk to them, you know? Like, it's good. I can be like, this is a picture of my daughter and this is my new cat. And, 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 like, it's good. Mm -hmm. What's the name of your new dog? Her name is Winifred. That's cute. Like Winifred Sanders? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yep, Winifred Sanderson. But her name is Winnie. Winifred, it got shortened to Winnie. And I'm one of those people where I just <laughs> start out with the name, the name of the animal, and then it just totally becomes a different name. <laughs> Will always makes fun of me. He's like, these damn animals aren't going to know what their name is. <laughs> You just call them everything in the book and they come to you. Mm -hmm. Because, like, her name is Winifred by rights. And then it got shortened to Winnie. And then I call her Winnie to the Fred. And then now she's just Fred. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) That's an evolution. It is. So that's how it kind of happens. And the cats, they're the same way. Like, we have a Penny Lane and then Louie. And Louie is just like... I don't know. I don't want to say it because then I'm going to sound silly. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to sound silly. I have a cat named Sage. His name is Sage Against the Machine Rourke. Um, and it's not because of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, he's definitely a little rager. Um, he's crazy. But he's a Highland Lynx. So he's like an ancestor of the lynx cats, like the big ass ones in the mountains. Oh, wow. And his little ears go back Uh and his tail's kind of nubby and he has six. Well, in the front, he has an extra little toe. So he has seven and six in the Mm. front and they look like little mittens like this. Mm -hmm. And he like bats things around like he has mittens. It's so freaking cute. But he's also crazy and he'll like run and just be like and attack you and you're like laying there and he's loving you up and then all of a sudden he's like ah. I'm like I cannot handle you but also you're really fucking cute so um he turns six months on Friday mm. yeah he'll be six months old and he's big he's like this big already I saw a picture yeah. and I'm like I thought he was an adult cat already oh no, he's only six months old oh, he's wow. like he's like quadrupled quadrupled I can't talk he's gotten way bigger <laughs> Holy man. He's so big. He's going to be like 25 to 35 pounds when he's done. That's huge. Yeah. And he plays fetch. Like he'll catch and then bring things back to us. 
and he likes to go to, on walks outside with his <laughs> harness. Like he's he's that kind of guy. Oh <laughs> wow! But we're planning on this like um, this hoppy like cat wall thing around the windows and around mm-hmm. our living room, so he can kind of just do circles. Or just like go mental and climb. Oh yeah, we're getting everywhere. Rid of the fish tank and like putting all the breakables in a glass case, and then he's gonna be able to like haul ass around the house because he needs that because he's really a mm-hmm. lion or something. Does he go outside? Um, on the on the um. Oh, your harness with the harness, yeah. Just because um, I mean he's he was really expensive, and I made payments on him because I'm mm. super extra. Mm-hmm. He's my emotional support animal, and <laughs> and our last cat Dexter ran away, and he never came home. Mm. So I was like, well, if we're gonna let him out, we have to do it this way because he's in Sny, and mm. and. Who knows what happened to him? He either got taken because he was awesome mm-hmm. and he was the best cat ever, or he got eaten by something in the woods. You know, like it, it was it was super sad for us. So I want to make sure that we don't let that happen again. Yeah, I mean, shit happens, and animals are animals, but they're also family members. So, Agreed. So yeah, we have Sage, Sage, Sagey Boy, Budge. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's all. She calls him Sagey Boy. It's cute. She's like, here, Butch, here's Sagey Boy. Like, she's so freaking <laughs> cute about it. I love it so much. But yeah, like, so he's our new family member and he's pretty awesome hmm. when he's not being an asshole. Nice. Yeah, but he's going to grow out of that. And I keep telling myself every day he's going to grow out of that. Well, I mean, he sounds like still a kitten, so he probably will. Oh, yeah. He's tiny. I mean, in his head. <laughs> in his head, yeah. <laughs> He's starting to open cupboards with his little mittens. He did it yesterday, and then he got stuck on the knob, and he's, like, hanging from the upper cupboard, like, with his little feet going. I was like, you're crazy, and you need to stop trying to break into the cupboards. And he just, he almost fell, but I caught him. (laughs) But, yeah, he's mischievous for sure. So our second cat, Louie, but he's uh, literally a stray. The kitten universe brought him to us. Like, it just showed up on my parents' porch two summers ago. And I thought my father was lying. He's like, go look on the couch. I'm like, okay. And then even before I could go see, the girls were like, mommy, there's a kitten inside. And I'm like, no, there's not. I thought they were just playing a joke on me. I go inside and he, this tiny little thing, he was like eight weeks old, just showed up literally on their porch. And I like to think, because my parents have a little, um, like a Jack Russell Terrier Chihuahua mix. Mm -hmm. He's only like 10, 11 pounds. Uh, The weekend before, he was barking out in the woods for like two days straight. So I I like to think that the dog was like, come on, get up here. And these these people are going to take like real good care of you. Mm -hmm. So that's my own little view on it. They had a conversation. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I he it. he lured him up and was like, "Nope, they're gonna be good for you." And sure enough, he's been with us for two years, and now he's back like in his area, <laughs> and he goes outside and like runs around, and mm-hmm. he's fixed. Because I do believe in like fixing animals. Oh, for sure. Because don't want cat colonies or unwan unwanted puppies. No, they're such a. I mean, they're cute, but it's hard. On, like, the community members that are doing the, like, rehoming and the taking care of Mm -hmm. the infants that were left without moms, like, to nurse them. That's hard. That's crazy. Like, um, who is it? The the, um, talk show host for Price is Right? What's his name? Drew. No, the other one, the older one. Bob Barker. Bob Barker. He always said, and get your pets fixed. Like, that was a big thing. (laughs) went to see the prices right in Cornwall and like people had t-shirts that said get your pet fixed I was like what is that from and they're like Bob Barker he was all about that I'm like he's a good advocate for animals yep. <laughs> oh, all the weird shows we go to see I'm going to see Missy Elliott <gasps> I saw that yeah and like two like the 17th I know I think I want to go I got um an Adidas outfit <laughs> 
No, he's not <laughs> fucking around. Are you going to do the bucket hat and everything? I have a bucket hat. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I got a bucket hat and like an Adidas dress and some tall Adidas socks to wear with my sneakers. And I didn't realize until that moment that I've had Adidas sneakers since like 99, <laughs> 98. Like every time I buy, like just like everyday sneakers, uh-huh. not running sneakers, I always buy Adidas. And I was like, oh, it's cousin Missy. <laughs> so cheesy i know but i'm excited i'm super excited but we got really good seats yeah we got them the day they went on sale before the prices went up so mm. it was a window of opportunity that i had to seize for sure i know i want to go i i was seeing all of like the tiktok of whatever show from whatever city what she was in it looks freaking amazing oh i'm excited i need to do that i need to do a deep doom scroll on missy concerts now oh so my I'm god do, do it. it i'm gonna it, it, she like literally goes above and beyond mm, i can't wait mm-hmm. I'm, I'm all about a good concert it's like watching a music video because her music videos were just totally over the top mm-hmm. so what i've seen on tiktok it's totally over the top her concert yay yes yay. it looks awesome it's good medicine that freaking good music mm-hmm. yeah i need a good metal show in my life though I've been thinking about it for a while, but I haven't seen one that I, I really want to go to. Uh, Rob Zombie's coming up in September. But... Yeah. I saw him uh, when he was in Syracuse with Corn. Oh, yeah. And it was like I was 15 again. It was super fun. And mm-hmm. I was on the floor, and he was like this from nice. me because he walked through the crowd, and it was it made my whole life. So I wouldn't mind because it's with Alice Cooper, I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure. It so. is. That would be very good. I know. I haven't yeah. seen Alice Cooper. I've seen Rob Zombie before, too. The only time I can think about Alice Cooper is like... Freaking... <laughs> Wayne's World? Yeah, Millie Wake. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes on talking about natives. and He's an ally. We need yeah. to go support him. He was the original talking about land back. For real. <laughs> He's like, all right. <laughs> Anyways, um... I don't have anything else to share, but we will be having um, a new social media Instagram for women's dance that will be coming soon. Mm -hmm. Um, And then also some new content and new backdrops. So uh, DM us if you want certain people on different topics, like what do you want to hear from us? We really love when you come up to us and tell us that we're doing things right. Cause we or don't that you're always... a fan. Yeah, because we don't really know what we're doing. No. So um, yeah, help us out. Give, mm-hmm. us, give us the For love sure. and the ideas. <laughs> then we can figure it out together, right? Definitely. All right. Well, I want to thank you, and I'm Dr. Rourke. <laughs> I'm Sarah. And Victoria. Have a good day, night. Okay, bye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>